Singapore has become one of the most developed countries in Asia, boasting one of the world's most competitive economies. In Southeast Asia, Singapore leads in industrial development, earning it the nickname Asian Tiger. However, behind its clean streets, there are some hidden dirty parts we will uncover today. Singapore is a small country located at the southern tip of Malaysia near the Riau Islands. This island nation consists of 64 islands, but only the largest one is inhabited. Its total land area is 722.5 square kilometers, which is almost the same as Jakarta, which spans 7,659.02 square kilometers. With a population of nearly 6 million people, Singapore is the second most densely populated country after Monaco. The residents come from various ethnic backgrounds, including Chinese, Malay, Indian, Arab, and a mix of other Asian and Caucasian ethnicities. Despite this diversity, the official languages are Malay and English. Interestingly, Singaporeans are known to have the highest average IQ in the world. Singapore gained independence from Malaysia in 1965, but its national anthem, Onward Singapore, was composed in 1958 by Zubir Said from Bukitinggi, Sumatra. With a long history of population migration, Singapore also has a lengthy industrial history. Today, it is recognized for its significant economic progress, rightfully earning its title as the Asian Tiger. One of Singapore's major revenue sources is tourism. In 2018 alone, the country welcomed at least 20 million international tourists. This influx is partly due to the city's cleanliness, which has earned Singapore the title of the cleanest country in the world. The history of Singapore's cleanliness began with its first Prime Minister, Lee Kuan Yew, who was deeply obsessed with maintaining a clean environment. He initiated the Keep Singapore Clean campaign, which introduced strict fines for littering. Following this, there was the Use Your Hands campaign that encouraged citizens to clean up their surroundings themselves. This culture of cleanliness took root and has continued into modern times. However, nowadays, it's not the citizens doing the cleaning. Professional cleaning staff have taken over these duties. Unfortunately, this shift has led to a loss of personal responsibility among the residents. One foreigner shared their experience in Singapore, revealing that locals are not as clean as they appear. People often litter because there are always paid workers to keep the city tidy. This behavior reflects a broader attitude of indifference towards the environment. The same foreigner recounted an incident on a double-decker bus where harassment occurred, yet no passengers intervened. Despite its reputation, Singapore is not entirely spotless. Evidence of this is seen in the existence of slums. A short documentary by Public House Esk showed the living conditions of migrant workers. These areas resemble dormitories more than neighborhoods, with large, partitionless rooms filled with bunk beds. Clotheslines, cheap furniture and cramped spaces characterize these living quarters. The video documented visits to at least five such migrant worker dormitories. Out of the total population, 40% consists of foreigners, the majority of whom are foreign workers. These individuals often face xenophobia or a dislike for foreigners. It's not uncommon for Singaporeans to openly tell foreigners to go back to your country. However, this xenophobia is not uniformly applied. It's more discriminatory. In the Vice documentary titled, Why Rental Discrimination is Still Common in Singapore, it was highlighted that Indian descendants often have to pay higher rental prices compared to other ethnicities. For example, Siddharth Karthik, who has lived in Singapore for a long time, shared his struggles in finding housing due to rental discrimination based on race. The situation is quite different for potential tenants from Europe. Foreign workers in Singapore are not just found in the manufacturing or construction sectors. Some also work as commercial sex workers. Uniquely, these CSWs must have a permit with the condition that they must be women from five specified countries. 
China, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore itself. This permit, known as the Yellow Card, signifies government regulation and oversight of brothels in Singapore. These workers are required to undergo regular health checks, be between the ages of 21 and 35, and pass an interview conducted by local police. The police then confiscate their contracts and passports, leaving the workers with only a copy of their passport. They must reside in the brothel, undergo routine HIV tests, cannot marry Singaporean citizens, and cannot take any other job besides being a CS to W. Violations result in a fine of 500 Singapore dollars. They work six days a week until their yellow card expires. Once the card expires, they are deported and barred from returning, depending on local police policies. For all of this, they are paid 6,000 Singapore dollars. For foreign tourists planning to visit Singapore, remember these rules if you want to avoid draining your wallet. Firstly, avoid littering or you'll face fines ranging from 300 to 1,000 Singapore dollars. Smoking in prohibited areas can result in fines of up to 600 Singapore dollars. With around 300 cameras monitoring no smoking zones, the chances of getting caught are high. Chewing gum in public can also incur fines of around 2,000 Singapore dollars. Fishing without proper permits can lead to similar hefty fines. Additionally, eating or drinking in unauthorized places can also result in fines. Despite lacking natural resources aside from its marine output, Singapore focuses heavily on industrial development. They've converted much of their land into factory zones. Of course, tourism, particularly shopping tourism, is also a significant focus. However, for those seeking wild adventures, the city might seem dull. The scarcity of resources also affects water availability. The government allocates quotas for clean water, resorting to advanced water recycling systems initiated in 1970 and expanded with new facilities built in 2013. They treat wastewater using cutting-edge technology like new water and ultraviolet sterilization. Rainwater is also collected and treated for consumption. This extensive process is necessary because Singapore lacks freshwater sources and even imports water from Malaysia at a cheap price. A contract in place until 2061. Behind the bright lights lie shadows, and behind progress there are consequences. It's crucial to appreciate the hard-working individuals who wake up early and return home late, tirelessly building the city. Until we meet again on the next video,